You know my guest tonight as the youngest ever woman to enter Parliament. What you probably don't know is that in the years since she quit politics, she's become a key figure in the global effort to stop violence against women and children. Would you please welcome Natasha Stott Despoyer? <laughs> Hello, Natasha. Hello, Charlie. Now, do you think politics is worse now than when you went into Parliament? Oh, I think definitely we're more cynical and disillusioned and we've got good reason to be. Uh, some of the behaviour is appalling, so little wonder we hold politicians in such low esteem. But part of it is sort of twas ever thus. I mean, it was pretty interesting while I was there and I'm not particularly excited by the way women are being treated in politics right now. So some things have got worse. So what was it like day one for you when you arrived at Parliament? Right. Day one, I remember a columnist having a go at me for the suit that I was wearing. He said it was a cheap purple suit because that day the devil wore, you know, Portman's, not Prada. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then all these bizarre questions about what shoes I was wearing, my then sort of infamous Doc Martens. And one of the first questions I got was, did I go into politics to find a husband? I mean despite the calibre available. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, you actually eventually did marry a lobbyist. Do you owe that journalist an apology? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was going to say you should ask Ian that question. But, uh... So how did you respond to that at the time? Oh, it was quite extraordinary because I think there was a novelty factor associated with being relatively young and female. I mean, remember that time in politics, it's, you know, more than 20 years ago, only around 14% of the parliament was female. So I was conscious of stereotypes, some ridiculous ones, and I'm staggered that it's more than 20 years later and we've merely doubled the numbers. I mean, it's so slow, the rate and pace of change. It's quite depressing, frustrating. You have a book out, it's called On Violence, and it is aimed at changing the conversation that we have about violence against women in Australia. And in that you write that violence is a national emergency mm -hmm. in Australia, yet it gets less coverage than dangerous strawberries. It amazes me sometimes, the coverage or the fascination, obsession we have with particular issues, um, popular culture or other things, and yet we have a national emergency taking place, this epidemic in our suburbs, in our neighbourhoods, where every week, on average, a woman is killed. A woman dies violently at least every week in Australia and usually at the hands of someone she knows. I mean, that to me seems quite extraordinary and I think that it deserves greater political, community and indeed policy reaction. The overwhelming impression I got from your book was that violence against women is the last note in the song. And that song begins a long way back. But can you explain how things like gendered toys and wearing blue and pink uh, can lead to violence in the future? Well, it might be for some people that that sounds like a long bow to draw, you know, but they can lead to the creation of a society that has very rigid gender stereotypes for our boys and girls and thus men and women. And I'm not saying that boys can't play with trucks or girls can't play with dolls, of course they can. But why would we limit our children's future based on whether they're a boy or a girl and suspect or suggest that they have to do certain things or perform certain roles as a consequence? I've heard you speak about this and you remain optimistic that it, it is a problem that can be solved. Well, we know that violence and violence against women and children is not some inherent, instinctive, biological condition. So basically the good news is violence is preventable. And so we can all play a role in being part of a society that eliminates this violence, that actually changes behaviours and attitudes that give rise to this violence in the first place. So we can do that. It's just a question of, you know, people understanding how they can help and what they can do. Congratulations on the book. It is called On Violence. People should find out more about our watch and the work the foundation does. Would you please thank the wonderful Natasha Stott-Despoyer. <laughs>